today I am showing you my favorite STEM activities for preschoolers. I have two daughters and my oldest is four years old and she loves tinkering with things and creating a anything she can think of. She loves to create and use her imagination. I'm really trying to encourage that and have come up and researched a bunch of super fun STEM activities to really keep her mind going. And I can't wait to show you all my favorites. And here they are. We are going to make a catapult. Do you know what a catapult is? Have you ever heard of that? So it's gonna be really fun. All you need for these are you need about 11 popsicle sticks. You need marshmallows, mini marshmallows are best, yeah. and some rubber bands. Oh, and you need a plastic spoon because that's gonna be our catapult. So to make a catapult, so I got my 10 popsicle sticks. Gotta put a rubber band around one side, just like that. And then Layla, I'm gonna take another one and slip it in between the last and this one, just like that. And then put another rubber band around this side make sure it stays in place. So now you're gonna take your plastic spoon, put it on like that, and take another rubber band. So you need three rubber bands. We're gonna keep this on here by wrapping the rubber band around it. And then you're gonna take another rubber band. I'm gonna try to find one a little smaller, a smaller rubber band. I'm just gonna go around on this side. Can you see that? And then go over to the other side like that. So you kind of keep this, the top part secure. And you got yourself a catapult. So here's our catapult that we just made from some popsicle sticks, three rubber bands, and a plastic spoon. So Layla, a catapult is like a kind of like a machine um, that you use that transfers energy from the spring to the marshmallow. Every object has potential energy. It has the potential to move. But until you actually release the catapult, it only has potential energy. Once you release it, the energy transfers from the catapult to the marshmallow, and the marshmallow now has kinetic energy. Where'd the marshmallow go? It flung like way over there. Let's go look for it. You wanna go look for it or should we do another one? Sorry, Grandma, you're gonna find some marshmallows. It's here. You find it? <laughs> Oh, it went straight up. It went straight up, but we're... There it is! So Layla, let's do some experiments. Okay, look, I'm only gonna bring it back just a teeny tiny bit. Oh, see? If you barely push it, it barely flies anywhere. So the further down you push it, the more energy it transfers to the marshmallow! Oh. Okay, Grandpa, if you had come in and gotten that in your mouth, that would have been impressive. So this catapult is such a fun little experiment you can do with your kids. And depending on your kids', kids age is how in depth you can go on what potential and kinetic energy is. And you can have lots of different fun competitions with this too, trying to see if you can like make a bullseye, like have a target that you wanna to try to hit with your marshmallows. Do like what we were doing, joking around, seeing if you can catch it in your mouth, playing with like how far you pull it back and maybe how many popsicle sticks you stack that might vary how far it goes or how short it goes to. Lots of different things you can do with this experiment. Do your kids fight putting on sunscreen? If so, this next STEM activity is a great one to show them how effective sunscreen is. All you need for this activity is some dark paper, like black or brown or really dark blue, some sunscreen and a paintbrush. So Layla, for this activity, we're going to be painting with sunscreen. So I'm gonna give you some paper and you're gonna draw on there. You can write, write your name, you can do a heart, you can do a rainbow, whatever it is, but we're only using I'm sunscreen. Gonna do, I'm gonna do a heart and my name. Perfect. I'm gonna do one too, okay? So Layla, I did an A for Angie, L for Layla, K for Karen, B for Brian and you wrote your name. Good job, and now, are you done? So what we're gonna do now is we're gonna go set it out in the hot sun. So let's go put our papers out there. Perfect, we're gonna set it right in the sun. And then we're gonna come back and check on it in like an hour. 
We're just coming outside to check the paper and it's actually been about three hours. We kind of forgot about it and just came yeah. back out. And as you can see, it's really cool. Some, the sun faded the paper where the sunscreen wasn't. So you can explain to your kids the science behind it, which is where there wasn't sunscreen, the sun's ultraviolet rays broke down some of the chemical bonds in the paper to make it the color fade. But where the sunscreen was, it acted like as a barrier and protected it. So you can explain to your kids that sunscreen does the same thing with their skin and protects their skin from the sun. So a really fun science STEM project, especially fun in the summertime. So we are doing a fun science experiment today where we are going to see if we can help prevent an egg from breaking when we drop it. Do you think we can drop an egg and have it not break, Layla? You don't think so, huh? Because eggs break so easily. You know, because you help me bake all the time when you bake them. So Layla, what we're gonna do is we're gonna test this out with four eggs. So I have four big Ziploc bags and we're gonna put an egg in each one and we're going to try to test it. So Layla, what I thought is I have some kind of just old stale cereal. We're gonna put an egg in some cereal. Another one, we're gonna put some marshmallows in the bag with an egg. And then the other one, I was thinking water. Now, key here is every time you drop it, you have to drop it from the exact same height each time. And we're gonna see if we can provide some cushion and not break the egg. Because we know yeah. if we dropped an egg by itself, it would break. So let's first do it with, how about the Bye. cereal? So we got the egg protected in there. So I'm gonna have you stand on here and then hold the bag out straight in front of you. Now drop it. Did it break? Yeah. It did it, did it. Oh, oh what if we have you stand up on the barbecue? And now drop it. Oh my gosh, it still didn't break, Layla, so the cereal protected it. Okay, so I want to make sure that they were high up yeah, enough, and just we're just doing egg. a plain one, just the egg with no protection. I want to see if it will still crack. It broke. It broke. Okay, so Layla, the cereal worked. It protected it. Do you think the marshmallows will protect it from breaking? All right, let's do one with marshmallows and test your hypothesis. And of course, you're eating one. <laughs> All right, can you hold it out? So we got it kind of really well protected. And now drop it. It didn't break. Yeah, because the marshmallows. They protected it, didn't they? So Layla, your prediction was right. Your hypothesis is, oh, well, I don't know if that'll do it. Do you think it would protect it if we put an egg with water and dropped it? What's your prediction? You think it'll protect it? Let's yes. try it. Okay, so I just filled that's up. That's water in this Yeah, oh, that's kind of heavy. You might need two hands. All right, you want to drop it? So Layla, what were the only two ones that protected the egg? Did the water protect the eggs? Nope. Did the cereal? Yep. Did the marshmallows? Yep, they did too. There's other things you could probably do with this. Cotton balls, putting it maybe like in two cups and taping the cups together. So many fun ways to have your children make hypothesis, educated guesses on what they think is gonna work, have them record the results. Super fun STEM activity. Today, Layla, we're doing another experiment where we are seeing what melts ice faster. I got three ice cubes all the same size. And we're gonna be putting salt on one, flour on the other, and sugar on the last one. Which one do you think will melt the ice faster? Salt, sugar, or flour? You think the sugar will? What do you guys think? Make a prediction in the comments below. Now you wanna make sure, if you're doing this with your kids, you put the exact same amount of each substance on the ice cubes. So we're gonna do a tablespoon of each one on each ice cube. Okay, now I'm gonna go set this on the counter and we're gonna check it every 10 minutes to see which one's melting fastest. All right, Layla, which one's melting fastest? Here's salt. Salt is melting fastest, huh? Look, flour's melting pretty good. And so is sugar, but definitely look at that big hole that's forming where the salt is. So what do we think? What melts ice fastest? Oh my gosh, you're right, the sugar froze on it. So salt melts ice the fastest. And that is why, and you know this if you live in a snowy area, we don't right now. We're in Southern California. We don't get a lot of snow. 
but they will put salt on the roads to melt the ice in the snow because salt melts ice very quickly. A fun STEM activity that teaches about carbon dioxide is having your kids blow up a balloon just using a water bottle, vinegar, and baking soda. So Layla, do you think we can blow up a balloon just with these three things? Yeah? All right. But, but just well, let's see what happens. So first, we want to fill up our water bottle with about a cup of vinegar. Now, you want to fill up your balloon with about a third a cup of baking soda. And this is a little bit easier if you have a funnel. Now, you want to put the, the balloon onto your water bottle. And we're going to dump it. Oh, look at it! So Layla, when vinegar and baking soda mix, they create a gas called carbon dioxide. So Layla, that gas, carbon dioxide, starts to expand in the bottle and pushes up and blows up the balloon. And the more gas there is, the more it'll, the bigger the balloon will get. So Layla, we were successfully able to blow up a balloon, which is vinegar and baking soda. Now can I Pretty cool. Those are just a few of our favorites that we have done recently. But some other really super fun STEM activities you can do with your kids are taking some toothpicks and mini marshmallows and just letting them go crazy. Let them build shapes out of them, different uh, letters, or you can have them build upwards, make a castle or a house. So many fun things they can do just using their imagination. And the other day, given that it's so hot because it's summer right now, I got a muffin tin out and I told Layla Jane to walk around the house House and pick out just different objects and we were going to see which things melt in the sun and which things wouldn't and there were some few surprises in there too but we had a great time doing that and predicting and making educated guesses on what might melt and what wouldn't I hope you all enjoyed these stem activities and try them out with your kids let me know if you have any other fun ones that I might be able to do with Layla Jane thanks everyone bye